Oh hi, I'm the heretic. So the system is going to collapse. That statement is so vague, it's become a cliche. Even if I'm telling the truth, which system is going to collapse? Is it late-stage statism pretending to be democracy in the West? Is it the financial system propped up by labyrinthine regulatory rules, fiat currency, and fractional reserve banking? What about our corporatist market economy, or simply the fiat currency system itself? The current globalist coalitions like NATO and the UN and the EU, will those collapse? Are any of these collapses mutually exclusive? Forgive me, I'm rambling, but the point is, is that there will be significant shifts in the governing and economic systems we take for granted in our modern world. As a result, it will be a lot harder for us to maintain our lifestyles. This will not be a permanent state of affairs, mind you, but in the transition period, goods you take for granted won't be as easy to get. You probably won't be able to get food at the grocery store, and even if there are vendors, there's no guarantee the slips of cloth in your wallets will be accepted. Utilities will be more expensive, assuming they're even available at all. And you'd better hope your car's filled with gas before the gas station's closed. Even if they aren't, you can expect lines around the block. Point is, things are going to suck eventually. The how and why isn't terribly important for this discussion, but it is going to collapse. Now, there are several things you can do to prepare. Buy cryptocurrency, particularly Litecoin, will be helpful when people revalue their assets in crypto. Having a stockpile of non-perishable food will be extremely helpful, as will gasoline, and having precious metals on hand are fantastic when you need something with which to exchange after fiat currency becomes worthless. I'm not going to go over all of these in detail just yet, but there is one piece of advice that I believe warrants its own video. That is, if you want to increase your odds of surviving the coming crisis, stay away from the cities. Did you catch that? Stay away from the cities! Come the collapse of the government's ability to pay welfare, the high welfare recipient populations concentrated in these cities will riot. And if you are anywhere near that, I cannot guarantee your survival. Hyperinflation, economic collapse, the U.S. government creditors demanding austerity, or even calling in their loans, even a simple computer glitch. The reasons the welfare system in the U.S. could collapse are legion, but collapse it will. Because at this point, the welfare state is held together by cardboard and good wishes. Now, how do we know they'll riot? It's simple economics. When you pay a store for a chocolate bar, you get a chocolate bar. When you pay people to be unemployed, they won't be employed. When they receive government benefits like EBT cards, public housing, Medicaid, they get all these benefits without having to put in the hard work of showing up on time, 40 hours a week, 9 to 5, pleasing fickle and often temperamental customers, and providing value to people. They can sit on their hands and play Fortnite to earn the same amount of money. Now imagine you're a child, growing up with no example of hard work in your household. No examples of work ethic, punctuality, integrity, any of the virtues that make workers attractive to employers. I mean, why would they need them? The government's going to give them money one way or another. Now continue this for 30 plus years, and you have entire generations of people growing up in such a toxic anti-work environment. The welfare state has bred generations of people to be dependent on the state for mere survival, all without them having to lift a damn finger. That would be bad enough, but remember that the welfare state is paid for with money stolen from taxpayers through government force. Now in all fairness, most welfare recipients aren't cognizant of this, but at least the mugger has the decency to rob you to your face. This matters because what happens when the wealth of government money these people are drinking from dries up? People weren't giving them money voluntarily, so they will need to find new ways of getting it. They can't get jobs because they never learned the skills that would make them employable. Hell, in many communities, you're ostracized as an Uncle Tom and a sellout for engaging with mainstream culture. I shouldn't need to explain how your family disowning you and your friends abandoning you is a strong incentive. So because they can't get jobs and they aren't getting money from voluntary sources, they're going to want to get their money somehow, 
And how will they do this? The same way they got it previously, through force. When the survival of themselves and their children is on the line, you're damn right they're going to go out into the street and riot, smashing and looting stores for things they consider valuable. We know they'll do this because they did this during the 2011 London riots, when the government threatened to cut welfare spending. Anyone they come across could be a target. This means you. I mean, who's going to stop them? The government? You mean the same government that brought this situation this close to begin with? You think if they don't have enough money to pay welfare recipients, they'll have enough money to pay police? Bitch, please. Wait a second. Police are paid with local taxes, and welfare is paid mostly by state and federal taxes in the U.S. The lack of welfare money shouldn't interfere with police funding. But you can be sure any crisis that prevents welfare from being paid will also decimate the budget of any police precinct the local tax revenues plummet, except the Mesa, Arizona Police Department. Those sick bastards will torment people for free. A anyways, high population density means large crowds could be attacking you, your homes, place of business, while also blocking your means of escape, assuming it isn't already blocked by everyone else also trying to escape. Hold on, there are lots of welfare recipients outside the cities too. That's true. However, despite having 32% of the U.S.'s population, 89 urban U.S. counties have 48% of welfare recipients in 1994, going up to 58% in 1999, clearly indicating significant concentration. Furthermore, less urbanized areas will avoid the problem of population density mentioned earlier. Now, it goes without saying, but not all urban areas can be treated as equally dangerous nor will avoiding the cities be a guarantee of your safety. Similarly, you could walk a nature trail wearing a suit made entirely of raw meat and not be attacked by a mountain lion. All I'm trying to do is help keep you safe by informing you of how to mitigate the risk of being attacked by a mob. Oh, when you see, you're when not you, going to use the mob I will, word oh, here. <laughs> a mob of welfare recipients. It starts by not putting yourself in that setting to begin with. So let's review really quickly. The welfare state will collapse. I couldn't possibly say when, but its former recipients will riot and at your expense. They are concentrated in cities, so avoiding the cities during the crisis is your best bet. Avoid moving to the cities if you can help it. If you can manage this, I cannot guarantee your safety, but you will definitely be in a better position than the tens of millions who live in cities today. Who knows? It might just save your life. Questions? Comments? Critique? Do you think visiting the cities is safe for the time being? Is there any hope of reclaiming the cities after the collapse and the rise of the counter-economy? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon and check out my livestream archive channel. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.